What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of North Mississippi Outdoors with the Joiners. Um, if y'all remember, we was having a problem. In fact, you'll see the video in just a second. Worth it uh, with our uh, Craftsman WS210 weed eater uh, carburetor messing up. I took the carburetor off multiple times and cleaned it. Uh, even did a video last year where I took the carburetor off. Uh, my little weed eater is, I guess, three years old now. Uh, but anyhow. What, wasn't having any luck getting the uh, carburetor to be able to cleaned out enough to work. Uh, got online, went to Amazon, uh, and uh, ordered another carburetor. Just curious, has anybody else noticed how big of a POS uh, Craftsman weed eaters are? I cannot tell you how many times I've had to rebuild the carburetor or clean out the carburetor on this Craftsman uh, WS210. So uh, we're fixing to give it a go and uh, y'all can watch. she wrote and so now we get to crank it all over again And that's how long it lasts. Just curious. Uh, I think actually Craftsman bought out Troy Built, which was a pretty big POS itself. And then Craftsman put their name on this piece of crap. But uh, I was just wondering. Uh, went to Parts Zen. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Parts Zen, but uh, I went online to Amazon and uh, ordered a carburetor kit. And I think it was it was less than $19 uh, tax and everything. And it come with a brand new carburetor. Uh, right there. Uh, just like the one that's on there. It also came with uh, tubing to replace the hose. And uh, come with a spark plug, a, uh, another fuel filter, and uh, spare bulbs. And, uh, so we're going to get busy and put that on, and hopefully that's going to fix our problem with our uh, Craftsman WS210 weed eater. Um, and uh, y'all come along, and y'all can watch me change it out. So first thing, of course, y'all noticed my nice workshop is actually my garage, concrete floor in my garage. But the first thing that we do is pop open the little door and just remove that. You got your air filter inside, and uh, take that off screwdriver uh, I think I actually have to use a flathead I like my little flipping screwdriver that flips around and is both a flathead and a uh, Phillips head screwdriver uh, you got your two screws that hold your carburetor on you'll take those off all right like this that one's loose that one is almost loose. And you can take your hand once you get it on there. Screw out, screw out. The cover comes off. Uh, notice the gasket right here that fell off that goes in between your cover, filter cover, and the carburetor. Uh, you got your two gas lines there. Uh, your uh, throttle hooks in right there and it popped loose whenever I took it loose, but it's really simple to uh, hook in there. 
And uh, so now the one thing that I did forget to do, I'm gonna turn it up on its side a little bit and I'm gonna crack open the fuel cap to relieve any pressure that was in there because I don't want fuel squirting everywhere whenever I pull the hose loose. And so that prevented that from happening. And now we have our old carburetor right here. And uh, <clears throat> got it taken off. Gonna set it to the side. Again, they are pretty much identical. And turn it the center right way. Except one's used and one's new. But other than that, I think it's gonna work perfectly. And uh, so, before I put the new carburetor on, I am going to open up the little packet and uh, get my new fuel filter out, just in case. Uh, like I said, it also comes with a uh, spark plug. Probably not going to use the spark plug. Uh, it hasn't been too long since I changed the spark plug on the weed eater, and I doubt that it's bad. Uh, it does have a gasket. It has two gaskets in there. It comes with two gaskets uh, to replace the uh, gasket on the uh, cover. And so we'll use one of those. Uh, run the weed eater up on its side so that gas don't run out. And I'm going to reach in here and bend the end to take the gas cap off. And then I'm going to reach in and pull the old filter out, the old uh, fuel filter. Take it off, it just pops right off. And I can pop the new one on, but I'm thinking that I'm gonna change the hoses out for a new hose. But I think the problem with that is gonna be that the hose they sent me is bigger than my hose. So it may or may not go through there. We're going to try it first without replacing the hose. Yeah. Because that's, I don't know, I could probably get it through there. But we're going to try it without replacing the hose because I think that hose is small. So I'm going to put my new filter on, fuel filter on, and drop it down and get through the ah. Get it in the fuel. And I think it's in place there. Put the cap back on. Flip it over, and we're going to install the new carburetor. Just like that. So we're going to hook the hose in there. Let me lay that down for a second. We use the new new gasket on the back. Put, go ahead and put a screw through there. Get through right there. There we go. Put that screw through. Get that one in the right spot. Put that screw through. Uh, carburetor back in place. Real easy to just hook it. Two screws through there, get them lined up with the holes. Find your screwdriver that you lost. By the way, I'm not a professional mechanic by any stretch of imagination. I do things myself. I've learned over the years. Uh, I, it's been my experience in most cases that it's cheaper for me to fix something than to pay somebody to fix it. And uh, that's why I tend to do things myself. So I believe that black hose goes on there. And that, goes, that hose goes on there. You should be able to tell if we've got the hoses right because Actually, you can uh, look inside and see that I don't have them right. The black hose goes there, and uh, this hose goes there. Because that's your 
airline that pressurizes your tank to force the fuel to come out. And so now, when we push the bulb, we should start getting fuel filled up in there. Let's see how it filled up with fuel. It wasn't doing that before with the old carburetor. So I can already tell we've made a big difference. So we're going to put the cover back on. Set it right there. Slide a little bit of this stuff out of the way. Get me a nice handy little gadget. Got to hold it one second. The thing that I do like about uh, Craftsman is it came with uh, this key tool to start it. And uh, so you connect it to your regular drill. Crazy enough, have a Craftsman drill. I guess y'all know by now. I shop at Lowe's. But uh, it has a hole down there to a starting hole so you don't have to pull the rope. And so we've already uh, pushed our bulb and got fuel flowing. So let's see if it'll crank. We're going to squeeze the handle, one tr the trigger one time, a couple of times. And we crank it until it fires, then move it to two. swap batteries. So what we have done now is we have taken the new carburetor, taken the bulb part and the uh, diaphragm part off of it and put it on the new carburetor. And we've got the weed eater to running except it won't uh, throttle all the way up. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. So now it won't idle and it won't go full. something different. That ain't working. That's what I said. I was... That, I took one part in the past and I never had a screen in there. Somebody just started to put in there, I think. Either that or... Wait, where's the screen at? Is it in here? Uh, 
It's behind that. It's right there. Yeah, to tighten that back up. Mm. You ain't gotta have to take that out to get the, get the screen out. Stab that kick through it, pull it off, and put that thing back on. So we're gonna run it without a screen. Huh? Mm -hmm. If that screen has got some kind of coating on it, well, I mean, you know, it could be stopped up completely because you can't really see the tail. There's the little screen. Got a hole in it now for sure. So I just poked a hole in it. <laughs> so we could take the screen out of this one and put in it, but I don't think it I don't think it needs one. Uh, so hey, you gotta figure out how to put that back on. Huh? There's holes and the holes don't line up, you got it, you know you got it wrong. Yep. That's how it goes. And there another gasket that goes on there. That one go on there? Yep. That one should just be. That's how that one goes. And it seemed like it sounds like it ain't getting no fuel. Yeah. Enough fuel. <clears throat> well, if that don't make a difference, my next get best guess is that it's the fuel line, but I guess it could be partially stopped up. If there's a fuel line, it'd be getting too much fuel. think of it sounds like a muffler but I mean what I see online they'll run but when you hit the gas they die just like this one's doing you think it could be the fuel line could I'm pull the muffler off okay. if it is the muffler you can probably take a drill bit and drill a hole in it just be louder So as y'all saw yesterday, or saw in previous part of the video, uh, continued to have trouble out of our Craftsman weed eater. Uh, could, never could get it to run. Probably need to uh, order the adjustment wrenches for the carburetor. Uh, I don't think the new carburetor came and set in proper adjustment. And then we tried uh, taking some parts off the new carburetor, putting them on the old carburetor. Never could get it to run. Uh, never could get it to really idle very well or get up to uh, higher RPMs. Um, my son took it home, who is a mechanic, took it home and he's gonna work on it. 
may be bad gas. I don't know. I, that's one of the other thoughts that I had was it might be bad gas. But anyhow, uh, thanks to uh, my mom, she ordered us a uh, Seneca, S-E-N-I-X, Cenex, Cenex uh, weed eater from Amazon. Uh, and I broke it out of the package today and uh, put it together and uh, have just started using it. It is actually a four stroke. Uh, so the Craftsman was a two stroke. For those of you that don't know the difference between a two stroke and a four stroke, a uh, two stroke, you mix gas with the oil uh, or oil with the gas. With the four stroke, you uh, pour the gas in one compartment and the oil in another. Uh, been using it for a few minutes. It seems to be pretty good. It's a 31 cc engine, so it's a little bit bigger engine than the uh, 25 cc. Uh, I will tell you really quick right off, the first complaint is, is that, and I don't know if my arm is very red or not, but let me flip this around. Uh, when you hold the weed eater and your arm rests right there against the head of the weed eater, that sucker gets hot quick. It gets hot quick. It You, you will very quickly learn that either that you're not gonna put your arm on there. All right, it does come with a nice little strap and uh, so far, so good. It seems to be running okay, and uh, it cuts weeds and uh, runs better than the Craftsman. So we will keep you updated. Thank you. So, uh, wanted to go ahead and wrap this up and say that it, the weed eater did fairly well. I mean, I cut a lot of grass with it. I had one area that, pretty large area that was pretty grown up with some pretty tough weeds and stuff and it did well. Uh, like I say, so far the one thing, I was wondering how they was gonna keep it cool with a four stroke, uh, four cycle engine. And uh, I'm guessing it's trying, they're, it's air cooled. It's the only, you know, air and oil. But uh, it got, it definitely got hot on the back of my arm where my arm was resting. In fact, y'all can probably see that red mark. I'm not wearing my glasses right now because I'm sweating profusely. But uh, the head of the weed eater did get really, really hot, but it worked. It worked, like I said, it cut the grass. That's what we needed to do. Uh, it come with a three-year warranty, actually. I'm looking on the box and see that it did come with a three-year warranty. So uh, we will see how it does and keep y'all informed. Uh, so... Please be sure and like and subscribe our, uh, to our channel. Uh, we're always doing something and uh, posting uh, stuff online. Uh, so please be sure and check us out. Check us out on Facebook as well. Uh, we appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good one.